Hi everyone. All right, June 8, 2019, human caused wildfire in Tonto National Forest grows to 6,200 acres. Human caused. Have you noticed articles that you read on wildfires or mainstream media reporting? Human caused, human caused, human caused. Yes, the stupid human, they need to be banned from national forests because, well, they don't know how to put out a campfire. I can't tell you how many articles I have read just recently on wildfires caused by humans. Does this article tell you what a human did to cause this fire? No. It's just human caused. All right. Um, it's not contained. Uh, growing rapidly, Arizona. If people would just do a little bit of research on the United Nations Agenda 2030 to understand that, yes, they are reshaping the world, reshaping the United States. They want you out of certain areas into other areas, mega regions. They are reshaping our country into mega regions that I have shown repeatedly. So don't just put down a comment. Well, where's your evidence? You've got to check. You've got to be a responsible adult. And check somebody's channel to find out if they have posted previously all the evidence. You know, it, it, common sense. Common sense should tell every American who has a working brain cell in their brain that something is very off with this reporting. Human caused. Um... And when the article doesn't even tell you why, what happened, where, where was this human, what did they do in Tonto National Forest to create this, there's something wrong with this reporting. Okay? All right. Um, if anybody knows what's happening with the Alberta fire, I did a research, a quick search on Google in particular. Yes, I want to find out what Google is posting you know, their first um, results in terms of what is taking place with the floods and the fires. Well, wildfires. Nothing came up about Alberta. So if anybody knows um, what's happening, please throw links down in the comment section. But everything was about, well, one result on the first page was about this Tonto fire, and then the fires, California. Oh, what's this? California's largest wildfire was caused by a hammer? By a hammer. A human-caused wildfire. Mendocino wildfire. Uh, just under, what, five or just over 400,000 acres caused by a property owner in Potter, Potter Valley in Mendocino County. He was installing a shade barrier, but he disturbed an underground nest of yellow jackets. So the man hammered a two foot long concrete stake into the ground to plug the hole. The hammering created a spark that lit up a patch of tall grass. Winds were strong, conditions were dry, fire grew out of control. Really? Cal Fire investigative report. That's what it says caused by a claw hammer, used by a human, a human. Um, you know, the IPCC Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, United Nations. Five minutes it would take to do a search to find out that, no, there is not a consensus of scientists that believe that humans are causing climate change. A um, whole lot of scientists, no, it's not CO2. And in fact, we need more CO2 because plants thrive on higher levels of CO2. Um, if they did a little bit of digging, they would find, wow. So these scientists on that panel, the IPCC, were instructed to look only at human caused factors, human factors related to climate change. They, wait, 
they were instructed to only look at human causes. So they ignored the sun. Yeah, you will find that out. You know, the internet has been a great thing in terms of giving us access to so much information that we didn't have before. And, well, unfortunately, there's an awful lot of people who want to watch the puppy videos, the cute little puppy videos, or uh, watch um, Netflix, you know, and, you know, these marathon shows. What do they call it? I don't know. Binging. Binging. TV binging. Um, oh. Ozone. Yeah. It's because you're turning on your air conditioner. You, the individual, is destroying the ozone because you turn on air conditioning. They don't look and don't report on what the military is doing to the ozone. How about those high frequencies they're shooting right through all levels of the atmosphere into the ionosphere and wow, they bounce back so powerfully, uh, extremely low frequency. Well, that is shredding our ozone. Oh, how about our military supersonic jets flying through that ozone, ripping it apart? How about all that spraying that has taken place? All of the chemicals and the heavy metals that are destroying the ozone. Oh, how about those multinational corporations that are destroying bodies of water, rivers and creeks and oceans? and those multinational corporations that are destroying so much of this earth. No, we're going to focus on the individual who drives an SUV, the farmer who has those cows that fart, and you, you turn on that air conditioning. So we've got to ration your use of air conditioning because you are destroying that ozone. Oh, look at that sun, the UV rays, the ozone is gone, gone. It's because of you. All right. Look, I don't, I don't know what to do with this world anymore. I don't know what to do with the idiocy. And I don't know what to do with my fellow Americans who just don't care, um, who continue to act like little immature, you know, well, teenagers or oh, some, not even teenagers. Um, and what just happened? Oh, some crazy cats, but I'm not doing this over. Look, guys, you know, all you can do now is prepare. Our fellow Americans are our enemies. Their lack of care, their refusal to, you know, lift themselves from their low level of thinking, their immaturity, their, <laughs> you know, you try to educate them, you bring them, you know, what you have uh, researched and no, nope, they're not interested. These fires, the campfire, they can't even put together, hey, all right, uh, it doesn't make sense. 24 hours in an entire virtual, virtually the entire town gone, paradise in 24 hours. No sinks, no tubs, no everything brought to dust. Directed energy weapons you won't look into our military using directed energy weapons. Um, can't consider it even for a little while that maybe what people are telling you is the truth. You're going with the lie. You put all of us in danger. So California, Northern California in particular, you are in danger. And already wildfire forces evacuations of dozens from homes near Fairfield in Solano County. Um, yeah, red flag warnings this weekend for increased fire weather concerns across Northern California. Um, across a wide swath of Northern California, including most of the Sacramento Valley and parts of the North Bay area, it will be in effect until Sunday, uh, 5 p.m. That's when, I guess, I don't know, temperatures are going to decrease or you're going to get rain or... Well, you know, there are critically low humidity, uh, isolated gusts, winds up to 60 miles per hour in the northeast, coming in from the northeast. Um, you know, Mount St. Helena, 
Napa County region, that's where the highest threat is. From Redding on down. Now, they're shutting off your power. They're getting ready for the wildfires. Yes, for extreme fire danger this weekend has Cal Fire crews on high alert for quick responses. CBS 13 Steve Large is live at McClellan Air Park where Cal Fire planes are ready to hit the fire lines if needed. Steve? And I want to start by showing you this crew that's actually cleaning one of these air tankers right now. You can see one of the guys holding the light, the other guy holding the mop, cleaning the wing off that particular air tanker. Good teamwork, guys. This is one of the air tankers that could be used by CAL FIRE on a wildfire to make sure it doesn't turn into a mega fire this weekend. This weekend? Wow. Well, I think you need to bookmark this site, which is the National Weather Service out of Sacramento, giving you these red flag warnings and check it out, you know, periodically because I do think they've ramped up the agenda, boy. The flooding, the massive flooding all over. Interesting, you know, I'll go to Drudge too because Drudge, wow, a whole lot of people go to Drudge. Nothing on the flooding, nothing nothing massive flooding all over the central united states flash flooding bringing about three feet of water virginia nothing so americans don't know what's going on but a whole lot of us all over the country have been trying to get through to our fellow Americans, trying to get them off their mainstream media reporting so that they can understand the big picture, but they won't, they won't do it. So, uh, yeah, they are our enemy, those who refuse to get off their willful ignorance and refuse to look into what is taking place. I suggest that you bookmark this. National weather uh, sites, their face, their Twitter, their Twitter account, wildfire update, um, hot temperatures return early next week with highs over 100 degrees in the valley and up to 70 and 80s in the mountains. If you have outdoor plans, make sure to stay hydrated and dress for the hot weather. Uh, this hot weather, oh, low humidity, and the, you've had a tremendous amount of rain, so you don't have those dry conditions. Uh, the winds can be whipped up by the use of electromagnetic frequencies. PG&E may cut. No, I believe you've been cut already. Is this true? Power company shuts grid to thousands fearing wildfires this weekend. Yep, PG&E power lines have been blamed for sparking many of California's worst fires in recent years, including the campfire, which killed 85 people, burned nearly, nearly, no, over 20,000 structures, shutting down power to parts of Yulo, Napa, and Sonoma counties on Saturday. So, those subscribers uh, in those areas do you not have electricity we know how much our customers rely on electric service and would only consider temporarily turning off power in the interest of safety during extreme weather conditions but extreme weather conditions are the new normal so shut it off completely permanently I, I so you know when you're going to get a gust of wind? You know exactly when you're going to get it? So you're that's why you're shutting off the power? You'll be notified by automated texts, email, and phone. Cal Fire officially named PG&E as being responsible for the campfire last month. Ah, could that be a lie? Yeah. So PG&E files for bankruptcy, fearing the lawsuits. PG&E is owned by Rothschild. 
PG&E, they are not going bankrupt. In fact, what happened when Governor Brown was still in office with PG&E? Ah, well, PG&E hit with all of those fines for causing other fires. Uh, was it the Santa Rosa fire? Don't know. You've had a lot of fires out there. Can't remember. But, yeah, Governor Brown, he signed an order passing on those fines to Californians because, well, PG&E, they can't cover the fines. They'll go bankrupt. Guess what? Now they're filing for bankruptcy. You're being lied to. And, the, 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 I'm sorry, electrical transmission lines owned by PG&E, uh, located in the Polga area. The investigation identified a second ignition site near the intersection of Concow Road and Rim Road. The cause of the second fire was determined to be vegetation into electrical distribution lines owned and operated by PG&E. Ah, wow. Same exact time, PG&E causes two fires in two isolated areas that brought about the campfire that destroyed virtually the entire town. Really? You're going to believe that. You're not going to look into all of the evidence provided by those investigators uh, that are not mainstream, that, that are not your authority figure. No, you won't listen to them. But you also won't listen to experts who tell you. Now, um, firefighter, his last name is Lord, I believe, in California. What did he see? Uh, a retired uh, firefighter. What he saw was evidence of directed energy weapons, which our military has been using for decades. And that would only take a five-minute search for anybody to look into. Ah, directed energy weapons. Yeah, does seem our military has been using them for decades, but you're going to listen to the mainstream media spew their lies when they say, oh, those directed energy weapons, they're still in that research and development stage. When all it takes is a five-minute search to find out that those mainstream media reporters are lying. Well, you know, this is coming. It's going to be, you're going to be denied electricity in California a whole lot now. Others will be rationed use of electricity. You will have to ration your use of air conditioning. And guess what? With those smart meters, they know when you turn on that air conditioner. So if you're turning it on at a time when you're not supposed to be turning it on, your electricity will go out because they got that smart meter that they can tell what you are turning, what you are, what you're turning on, what you're using. Are they using their washing machine? Are they using their air conditioner? Now, we, we've trapped ourselves in a prison grid for the powers that be to control, yes, every aspect of our life. And that control is already, we're, we're facing that control already. Um, we're living it. So, a power company shuts off grid to thousands fearing wildfires. What about all the people who rely on electricity to continue to live? And there are people. They need the electricity to supply them with oxygen or whatever medical device that they're using. Uh, you know, so you have these extreme temperatures shut off your electricity. What about all the people who will actually die from the heat? Yeah, look, I don't know what to tell. I don't know what to tell people anymore. I don't know what to, I I'm like, I I'm, this is utter madness, idiocy. It's, as its leaders 
tour of paradise. PG&E warns it may cut power. Well, here's your tweet. You also have concerning swarms of earthquakes. Unexpected turn. An unexpected turn? What? A swarm takes an unexpected turn. And there is reason to worry. So, if you live in Fontana, you wouldn't be blamed if you felt the case of the jitters. A swarm of earthquakes has shown remarkable staying power in the area around Southern California City. Uh, a Caltech seismologist, uh, the chance that the series of tremors will turn into a larger and destructive quake isn't particularly high. Um, there have been more than 700 earthquakes recorded in Fontana area since May 25, in a few weeks, 700, ranging from a 0.7 to 3.2. And they're shallow. They're shallow earthquakes, which can be brought about by extremely low frequencies, which you have going off pretty much all the time now in Southern California. Isn't it interesting? Ah, I'm not going to look at what extremely low frequencies can do. All of these uh, dots of defined lines that are emitted. Uh, I, I'm not going to look into it. I'm just going to believe what the authority figures tell me because I've been that brainwashed where authority figures and experts, they're the only ones who can speak on the matter. The swarm initially moved northward, but something unusual began Friday when the swarm turned around and went south. Wow! Okay. Back toward the middle of the activity and the 60 freeway. This is somewhat of an unexpected evolution. Activity is fading pretty slowly. That would suggest it's going to continue for, I don't know, at least several weeks. We're watching what's happening and we're trying to track this activity. Experts recommend, listen to this, recommend removing heavy objects around beds, strapping bookcases and dressers to walls, anchoring flat screen televisions to walls, installing toddler safety latches on kitchen cabinets, and ensuring picture frames on attached are attached to walls with quake friendly hooks. The last fatality was, well, from a TV unstrapped, hit the head, killed someone. Um, hit their head. Make sure their water heaters are properly secured to reduce the chance of a house fire. Homes that sit a few steps off the ground and built before 1979 should be evaluated by a structural engineer to determine whether they need to be braced and bolted to the foundation to prevent them from sliding off when shaken. Apartment owners with carports or garages on the ground floor should also consider having their buildings evaluated to determine if retrofit is needed. And all of that is coming to you. It will be mandated. Mandated. And the retrofits mandated will be very, very expensive. So this is where the swarm took place right here in Fontana and earthquakes relatively shallow. Yeah, beginning just one to two and a half miles under the surface. As a result, the shaking has been widely felt. Shallow earthquakes, that's the signature of what was referred to as a harp earthquake. Extremely low frequencies so that harp, okay, emits very powerful high frequencies into the ionosphere, bounce off that ionosphere, come right back down to Earth as extremely low frequencies, and voila, you've got an earthquake. Now, don't leave me stupid comments. Don't reveal to the world your ignorance by saying, 
I'm stupid, um, or where's the evidence of what you're saying? Please check out my playlists. I have an awful lot of evidence. So, you know, look guys, you know, it's either the Oroville Dam, you know, which unbelievably, yes, the Trump administration is very concerned about those salmon that were killed by the Department of Water Resources. Uh, state killed thousands of salmon. Now the Trump administration wants answers. They want answers. What are you doing to the salmon? Uh, it, uh, all right. Downstream from the dam, fishing guides on the Feather River say they found thousands of baby salmon that turned up dead after the State Department of Water Resources reduced flows down the spillway and water levels on the river abruptly receded. Uh, they provided the Sacramento Bee with photos of dead and dying fish on the riverbanks to back up their allegations. Now the Trump administration demanding answers. On Tuesday, the federal Energy Regulatory Commission, which holds the dam's license, sent a letter to Governor Gavin Newsom's administration asking for detailed information on how many fish died and what Department of Water Resource, Resources would do to prevent further fish kills. The move would, could lead to more tensions between the Trump and Newsom administration over Oroville Dam. Ah, well, how come the Trump administration is not sending letters to Newsom regarding the structural structural problems of that dam, which, if it overtops, can kill, well, over hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, and all of the life in the way of that wall of water that so many are very concerned about. Now, the Trump administration is concerned about the salmon, which is odd because they had another fight regarding the salmon. Here, California takes major steps to protect salmon from Trump administration. What? What's going on? Here, uh, the Golden Gate Salmon Association and the Pacific Coast Federation of Fishermen's Association applaud the state of California for acting to protect California's economically valuable salmon fishery. Uh, it will write a permit for the state water project operated by the Department of Water Resources to continue delivering water to its contractors. What? Okay. The permit will comply with the terms of the California Endangered Species Act. The action comes as, as the Trump administration advances its plans to seize more Northern California salmon water and divert it to supporters growing almonds and pistachios in the arid western San Joaquin Valley. State officials announced plans today to develop their own protections rather than rely on the federal government to lead efforts to protect the fish. Oh, okay. So I guess the Trump administration doesn't really care about the salmon? Or they do really care about the salmon? Or the state doesn't care about the salmon? Or who, what, April 19, 2019? Diverting water? The federal government's diverting water? What's going on here? I don't know, but that's the point. You're just, you're, you're just thrown bullshit information to confuse the hell out of you confuse the hell out of you but the idiocy you know and I'm not saying salmon don't deserve protection they do all life deserves protection but when you are now sending letters about that dam and how they're using that dam and it's killing salmon when you're also diverting water that well, the salmon need, okay, well, forget that. Um, but what is going on here? When we all know there are so many structural issues with this dam, and, well, we're not hearing much about that from the Trump administration. Guys, um, 
we don't have our fellow Americans standing with us. Which means we are all in danger now. You guys in California, you really do need to be prepared and keep your eyes open and on a daily basis check the sites that will tell you what is going on. Bookmark the National Weather Service Sacramento's Twitter page and bookmark the National Weather Service their site that will tell you where the red flag warnings are. When you have your Cal Fire already prepped, cleaning out their planes, tankers, whatever. Well, you kind of know. More wildfires for you. All links are below.